Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Tuscan Fish Stew. That's right, every morning along the beautiful coast of Florence, the fishermen return from the sea to share their catch, some of which is used in simple, rustic, garlic and herb infused dishes like this. And while my grasp of Italian geography might not be that strong, my fish stew game is. And the recipe you're seeing here today is very, very loosely based on a trip I took to Florence over 30 years ago. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, I'm gonna add some beautiful end of summer cherry tomatoes to this blender, to which I'm gonna add a bottle of clam juice. Or you could use some fish stock if you have it, but you don't. And what we'll do is go ahead and blend this for about 10 or 15 seconds until smooth. And while you can use any tomato product here, I really do like the cherry tomatoes for this because they tend to be very sweet as well as having a very fragrant, intense tomato flavor. So those are the pros. The cons would be they have seeds and very, very tough skins. Which is why after we blend this smooth, we're gonna go ahead and pass it through a strainer because all we want is that sweet, fragrant liquid and not the aforementioned seeds and tough skins, which will hopefully be left behind in the strainer. So we'll go ahead and press through all that liquid and we should end up with something that's pink, foamy, and borderline disturbing to look at. All right, so yes, that does not look appetizing yet. But don't worry, that color is caused by millions, possibly billions of air bubbles, which as you'll see, will cook out. And we're actually gonna be left with something that has quite a beautiful color. And then once that's set, we'll simply reserve it until needed. And we'll move on to the rest of the ingredients, most of which we will add to this cold pan right now. And that will include some olive oil, preferably from Tuscany. We also wanna to toss in a little bit of onion. And I'll be using some green onions as well as a whole bunch of sliced garlic. And you could if you want mince it or chop it. But I kind of like the look and the taste of the sliced in here. And then we'll also toss in one anchovy filet, which is basically salt with benefits. And then we'll finish up with some hot red pepper flakes so that I don't have to use or even mention cayenne. And that's it, we'll go ahead and take that over to the stove and place that on medium heat. And we'll wait for that to start sizzling. And once it does, we'll cook that stirring for a couple minutes just until our garlic and onions start to soften up a little bit. But we don't necessarily want a lot of color on the garlic. So we do want to be a little bit careful here. Okay, keep in mind, they're gonna cook for another 10 minutes or so once we add our tomato broth. And basically all I'm doing here is checking with the tip of the spoon. So I can kind of feel when those garlic slices have gone from raw and firm to something that's just starting to get tender. And then once we've determined our veggies have cooked long enough, we'll go ahead and carefully pour in our tomato mixture. And we'll stir everything together and raise our heat to medium high because we want to bring this up to a simmer. And as this stuff comes up to temperature, you'll notice that foam's going to dissipate and that color should deepen beautifully. And in a few minutes, it's going to look significantly less disturbing. And then once this mixture does start to bubble, we can go ahead and back our heat down to medium and simmer this for just 10 minutes. Okay, usually when we hear the word stew, we think of long cooking times. This is not one of those recipes. Okay, so we'll adjust our heat. And like I said, we'll let this simmer for about 10 minutes, at which point we can introduce whatever seafood we're gonna be using, which today for me is gonna be some halibut and some peeled Devein shrimp. And you really can use any fish you want. I mean, you are after all the Poseidon of Deciden. But no matter what you use, you're gonna to wanna to cut it in like two inch pieces so it cooks nice and quickly and evenly. And then besides some seafood, we're also gonna need some herbs. And I have a little bit of basil, some Italian parsley, some oregano, and a little bit of rosemary, which we just want a pinch of, since that really can overpower things. But a little bit is gorgeous in this. But anyway, assuming our tomato mixture has been simmering for about 10 minutes, we can go ahead and transfer in our seafood. And by the way, if you happen to be using some very small shrimp, or maybe some calamari that's only going to take like a minute to cook, you may want to give your fish a few minutes head start. But since I'm using some pretty big shrimp here, I'm just gonna go ahead and add it all at once. And then what we'll do at this point is give that a nice big pinch of salt, as well as raise our heat to high. And then we're gonna cover this tightly and let it cook for just like five minutes or until our fish is cooked through. So not only is this a fast recipe, but it's also a very easy recipe since we're simply cooking this until our fish flakes apart. And you can kind of tell when it's getting close because that fish will kind of spring back and not feel mushy anymore. And as soon as that happens, we can finish this off by doing two things. We can go ahead and stir in our freshly chopped herbs, as well as turn off the heat. And by the way, we want to be a little bit gentle when we stir that in, so as not to break up our fish too much. And then once all that's been stirred together, and our fish is cooked through and will flake apart, we are pretty much done except of course giving this a taste for seasoning. 
which is something you always need to do. And by the way, I just realized Poseidon is a Greek god. So for this, let's go with you are the Neptune of testing what's on your spoon. So I checked mine out and it was perfect, as was the doneness of my fish, which means I can go ahead and serve this up into a warm bowl, which is hopefully adjacent to some nice crusty bread. And in addition to making sure we have plenty of that brothy sauce, for a few final touches, we'll go ahead and drizzle over a little more olive oil, as well as another pinch of chili flakes. And then last but not least, the obligatory sprig of fresh oregano. And that's it, what I'm calling Tuscan fish stew is done and ready to enjoy with a spoon and nice hunk of bread. And of course, it doesn't matter if something's fast and easy, if it's not also incredibly delicious, which this most certainly is. Okay, while fairly intensely flavored, the broth is very light, and I think because we use those cherry tomatoes, it has a beautiful freshness to it. And of course, since we are cooking the seafood in a broth, you generally don't have to worry about things getting dry, which can be a problem for a lot of people when they try to cook seafood. So to summarize, a beautiful, fast, easy, and extremely tasty method. And even though I don't remember a ton from that trip 30 years ago to Tuscany, I do remember being sort of surprised that they used herbs I associated with cooking meats, like sage and rosemary, with various seafood. Whether it was grilled or roasted or in a stew, they were using some things I never even considered. So I found it very enlightening and liberating, but most importantly of all, delicious. So while I'm not exactly sure how authentic this is, I am pretty sure it's something you're going to enjoy a lot, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.